Welcome to the city of Dundee for a Christmas celebration. After all the hustle and bustle of the preparations, I hope you can pause a moment as we go into Christmas morning. We start with Once in Royal David City. Once in Royal David City stood a Oh, great to start with that old favourite and to hear the lovely voice of 17-year-old Ilsa MacDonald in that first verse. We've got lots of young voices to come tonight, both from the Dundee branch of the National Youth Choirs of Scotland and from the pupils of Dundee High School, who read now two of the great Old Testament passages about the coming of a Messiah. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
about that time when Caesar Augustus ordered for a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be accounted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judah, David's town, for the census. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. There were shepherds camping in the neighbourhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A saviour has just been born in David's town. A saviour who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem village, Judah territory, this was during Herod's kingship, a band of scholars arrived in Jerusalem from the east. They asked around. Where can we find and pay homage to the newborn king of the Jews? We observed a star in the eastern sky that signaled his birth. We're on pilgrimage to worship him. When word of their inquiry got to Herod, he was terrified, and not Herod alone, but most of Jerusalem as well. Herod lost no time. He gathered all the high priests and religion scholars together in the city and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? They told him, 
Bethlehem, Judah territory, the prophet Micah wrote it plainly. It's you, Bethlehem, in Judah's land, no longer bringing up the rear. From you will come the leader who will shepherd rule my people, my Israel. Herod then arranged a secret meeting with the scholars from the east. Pretending to be as devout as they were, he got them to tell him exactly when the birth announcement star appeared. We're going inside Dundee's fabulous new v &A Museum now for a modern telling of the Christmas story. It's called The Three Ships. It was written and is being read by the actor Sir Tony Robinson. The music is by Paul Miller and it's sung by Aberdeen University Chapel Choir. We pick up the story where the three wise men come to meet King Herod. In Jerusalem, King Herod stood on the steps of his shining white temple, his face wreathed in a happy smile. Golden birds, crafted by the finest eastern toy makers, hovered above his head. Blazing meteors of multicoloured fire illuminated the night sky, and teams of puppeteers manipulated giant paper dragons which galloped down the temple slopes, terrifying and delighting the populace. They were mere playthings, of course. Exotic diplomatic gifts designed to flatter him. The real flattery was the presence of this caravanserai of wise strangers from beyond the boundaries of the empire who had travelled thousands of leagues to honour him. Him, the man who had transformed Israel. He listened politely as they paid tribute to his craftsmen and surveyors, to his roads and bridges and aqueducts, and of course to his great and glorious self. But he soon grew tired of their adulation. Everyone wanted something from him. What was it these fawning foreigners desired? We wish to pay tribute to the King of the Jews. I am here, replied Herod. Here I am. Um, not you, great and glorious majesty. The other one. Herod smiled the smile of a viper about to release its venom. Which other one? Oh, 
Bethlehem was full. Newcomers were sleeping like rows of pickled fish in each room and stairwell and on every roof and courtyard floor. The old man and his wife were lucky, if luck's the appropriate word. They found themselves in the part of town where respectable Jews never went. It was the home of the Nabataeans from the far deserts, refugees who'd fled brutality and torture in their own lands and had risked the dangerous and harrowing journey to Judea to start a new life. The sun had long set, but discordant music still rang through the alleyways. There was an intense aroma of exotic cooking and the rank tang of open sewers. Market traders barked out their wares, pickled chicken's feet and necklaces made from painted seed pods. Naked children ran hither and thither. A stranger with dusty hair and a long staff took firm hold of the donkey's bridle and led the couple towards a shack where doer men with bloodshot eyes were drinking a pungent brew from crudely made cups. Behind the shack was a lean-to. The stranger drove out the chickens and geese, went outside and stood guard. The woman sank to the ground. Her time had come. She cried out and gave birth among the flies and the detritus. The old man emptied a discarded food trough, refilled it and laid the tiny boy in the fresh straw. An ox lumbered over and licked him like a newborn calf. Then it slowly dropped to its knees and stared at the child, the twinkling star reflected in its cow eyes.
The wise men and women had been waiting for hours in Herod's courtyard, surrounded by mosaics, sparkling fountains, and painted servants with trays of canapes. Young Jewish boys with coiffured ringlets and ivory harps sang the poetry of King David, and when they'd sung every psalm, their choir master nodded, and they started all over again. Above them in his council room, Herod paced angrily round a vast cedarwood table covered in ancient scrolls and manuscripts with a gaggle of religious advisers in his wake. And this star of which the foreigners speak is foreseen in other holy scrolls too, he barked. Indeed, your majesty, in the book of Numbers it prophesies, then shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. A scepter? snapped Herod. So, he'll be a king? He will, your majesty. It also says, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. A king with a kingdom here in my country, he grabbed his advisor by the throat. Where? Where can I find him? Um, according to the book of Micah in Bethlehem, your majesty. Bethlehem, though thou be little amongst the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth he that is to be the ruler of Israel. Bethlehem, roared Herod, that dunghole. It would appear to be the case, your majesty. He rushed to the window. Silence, he bellowed, and the harps and piping voices ground to a halt. Good news, he roared to the wise company and waved an ancient scroll at them. Bethlehem in Judea, he's there. You must go now. Search diligently for the child, and when you've found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. Please. The astrologers and magicians left off their feasting, called for their camels, and set off towards the Judean hills. Herod waved an enthusiastic farewell but the words of the prophet echoed round his head. Yet out of thee shall come forth the ruler of Israel, he murmured. I think not. And what Herod did was to order the killing of all the baby boys in Bethlehem to make sure he had no rival. The clashing arrangement of our next carol hints at the horror of that.
The death of a child is devastating. The murder of a child is even worse. The destruction of innocent lives cut short when they've hardly begun leaves parents paralyzed with grief. Herod's order to wipe out all the children in Bethlehem in order to kill child Jesus, to cut off all possible challenges to his power, is known as the slaughter of the innocents. These children are remembered as the holy innocents. We could say that they are holy or completely innocent. In our own time, the slaughter of children is continuing. The malnutrition of millions of children all over the world, the killing as part of ethnic cleansing in Bosnia and genocide in Rwanda, deaths in acts of terror in Syria and other appalling stories of the deaths of children. We sanitize our own part in this using language like collateral damage, where in reality, each dead child represents a life-changing loss. The loss ripples out from that unique, irreplaceable life, affecting the family, their community, our own common humanity. We must refuse to be consoled or to accept easy platitudes in the times of such loss. We must bring to God our outrage and our heartfelt desire for change. So what's to be done? This section begins with some words by the Catholic saint and Nobel Peace Prize winner, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. God asks us to see Jesus in every human face and to love them as we are loved. I believe in person to person. Every person is Christ for me. And since there is only one Jesus, that person is the one person in the world at that moment. I see Christ in every person I touch. It is as simple as that. Whenever I meet someone in need, it is really Jesus in his most distressing disguise. To be able to love one another we must pray much, for prayer gives a clean heart, and a clean heart can see God in our neighbour. If now we have no peace, it is because we have forgotten how to see God in one another. If each person saw God in his neighbour, do you think we would need guns and bombs?
how much of our energy is dissipated in damaged relationships to be in conflict, to harbour resentment, to hold a grudge, all are exhausting. God longs for us to live in harmony, in genuine love, in peace. But we can find it so hard. Can this Advent be a time of making peace, of being reconciled? The making of peace comes on different levels. It may be personal, making peace with ourselves. It may be with another person who has hurt you, moving forward in a relationship where there is discord. It may be spiritual, making peace with God when you have been angry or disappointed. Or it may be corporate, needing to be reconciled as a community or nation. Who do you want to make peace with? What is blocking the way to peace, preventing you from living in harmony? What do you need to share with God to be at peace? Do you hear what I Dundee's own choir, loads of women singing, led by Alice Mara. As we approach the end of our Christmas celebration, we leave you with some words and music that reflect on how the birth of a baby 2,000 years ago changed the world. I wish you a very Merry Christmas.
This was the moment when before turned into after, and the future's uninvented timekeepers presented arms. This was the moment when nothing happened, only dull boringness sprawled over the empty earth. And this was the moment when even energetic Romans could find nothing better to do than counting heads in remote provinces. And this was the moment when a few farm workers and three members of an obscure Persian sect walked haphazard by starlight straight into the kingdom of heaven. Come, God of compassion, to be with those whose loneliness makes every night longer than the one before. Come, God of brokenness, to mend those whose shattered lives seem impossible to put back together. Come, God of hungry hearts, to companion the people who sit at one-chair tables, in restaurants overflowing with parties and in apartments with scarred linoleum floors. Come, God of gentle arms, to cuddle every child who cries themselves to sleep. Come, God of every moment. Come, God of every person, that we might be the people that others need to find every moment of their lives.
Thank you.